All right. So that's that's about it for the introduction. So let's dive into the topic from today, which is deployment of Excelinx powered spreadsheets. All right. So as usual, um, I would like to start uh, with a little motivation why I've chosen this topic for today's webinar. And then we are going to go through our way and we're going to look at different configuration possibilities we have in Excel Wings, um, things that can influence how we deploy a spreadsheet powered with Excel Wings. Then we're gonna look at some of the options that probably not all of you have met or know about. Um, it's the ability to deploy it as a zip package, to deploy it as a Python package. Um, then we'll look at the standalone option we have when we use the quick start. Then, um, like an evergreen is also the frozen executables, uh, Py installer, these kind of things. We're going to look into that very quickly. Then uh, number five is about, you know, deploying on shared drives, on Dropbox, maybe an option that you just haven't thought of. And then as the last point, I'm also going to show you some additional uh, features that we offer for those of you um, who like to support the project and go for an Excellence Pro subscription. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, what we're going to do over the next 30 minutes. So as I said, as usual, uh, we start with the uh, but why question. And, and this time is, is relatively easy. So uh, it's, it's very easily one of the uh, top one questions that we get. People ask, can I deploy Excellence workbooks without Python? or without you know, the user having to have some sort of a Python, local Python installation. And so the short answer to that question is simply no. And the long answer is, is basically uh, the rest of the presentation. So for whoever the short answer doesn't, is, isn't good enough, I invite you to um, stay a little bit longer on, on this call. So I think, the uh, most standard way of starting a new Excel Wings project is probably by using the Excel Wings quick start command. Uh, you probably used it. It's just a command prompt. You say Excel Wings quick start and then you give it the name of a project. And then that creates kind of your starting point, which is a um, basically a project folder with your project name and then a file in it with all the same name and you can kind of hit the ground running in that setup. Now what I believe is a common misconception about that is that this is not like this is not this doesn't have to be this way right so that's just the default, that's one way of how things work. And it's really just the beginning, it's, it's not the end. And um, Excel Wings doesn't require you to, to call the Python file the same as the Excel file. And it also does not have to be in the same, in the same, um, in the same directory. And so sometimes I say reading the doc, the doc helps, but obviously um, improving the docs would probably help a lot too. So I hope to, to get some more time to improve them going forward. Um, so before we uh, quickly uh, ch change over to, to some, some, some live demo, I wanted to introduce the three levels of configuration that we have available in Excel Wings. And so we basically have uh, uh, the level of the workbook. So we have an excelwings.conf sheet where we can define, you know, which interpreter we're going to use, uh, wh what's the Python pass we're after, and so on and so forth. And then we have the option to do it with an excelwings.conf text file, which is in the same directory as the Excel file. And then finally, we have the option to kind of fall back to a global configuration. And that really sits in your user directory under the .excellence folder. And it's really the, the configuration file that you are editing by looking or by changing the values from your ribbon add-in. So the ribbon add-in is really just an editor, if you want so, for the global configuration file. Uh, let's see. All right. So that's basically what I've um, planned to show you live here. So let's just do this real quick. So I have the Excel Wings quick start demo here, and this will 
create my folder where if you have ever done it before, you will find these familiar files and I enable the content and I'm going to my run main button here in, in the Excel Wings ribbon. And so that's kind of the idea. Um, if you have configured a global kind of default Python installation, or if you have already set, like I do, a, a, a path to an interpreter, or maybe in your case, um, the, the setup for the Anaconda or Conda uh, environments, then you can simply you know, start right away and everything works right out of the box. So, and, and you can also import the, the, um, the, the UDFs and there is also this um, standard uh, test UDF that you can use and everything is fine. So now um, what we do is we go back and basically drag out this, this um, the source file. And this means that when I do try now to run, the, run main again, then it will complain that will not find the demo uh, the demo file anymore. And that's obvious because it's not, you know, co corresponding to the default expectations here. So what we can do now is we go to the Excel Wings con config file um, sheet here. We activate it by default here. It has an underscore. So we take away that underscore to activate it. And then I am going to actually activate the Python path here. And to do that, I can use things like user profile backslash desktop. And I'm actually going to take the uh, standard, standard Python interpreter that we have there. So when we have that, let's see if it works again. And it does. So basically by using uh, the Python path, uh, we specify additional directories where Excel Wings is going to look for your source file. And that's kind of helpful if you have a specific uh, folder where you want to deploy your Python code. This can be, um, I don't know, like on a shared drive, we can, we'll get uh, to that later on, but it can be like anywhere um, you, you would like it to be. And so sometimes if you want to deploy a Python powered and an Excel Wings powered spreadsheet to a user who may not be completely familiar with Python, then that's a way how you can get the Python files out of your site. And then finally, if you rename, for example, the source file, so you don't call it the same as, as the, the Excel file, then you simply have to adjust the run Python call or for the UDFs, you just have to specify the name of that source file again, where the UDFs are going to be found. And then if you do that, uh, you will be able to import them again and run them uh, the, the same way as you did before. And that's basically how the flexible option works. And so for the run Python call, it's basically get rid of this um, convoluted default thing, thing here and just say, you know, import demo one instead of demo. And then again, demo one, uh, maybe I don't have a, a a typo, so maybe it works. What will not work at this point is the run main button. So the run main button at the moment is really just for the default case, which means that it really expects the the setup that the quick uh, the quick run um, command generates. So that will not work. But you can call it from here, and you see like once you fix the command, the run Python command to import the the different named module now, everything works as before. So that's just to kind of show you that um, the quick start is really just the beginning. You have all the necessary tools available in the configuration to build and, and you know, structure the code and, and the Excel file the way it makes sense for you. Then we have a couple of like easy options that may be helpful in, in our journey to like make deployment easier. So 
One of those uh, options, and, and that was actually a, a community distribution from a guy who was at the first London meetup. Not sure if he's listening in today. Um, and this first option here is you can zip up your Python source files in a zip file. And so that's kind of helpful if you have a lot of Python files and you just want to make sure you don't have to like, you know, copy over a couple of Python files, then what you can do is you just select all these Python files and you send them to a zip file and that's about it. So uh, from, from here on it works as before. So you can just have a zip file which contains all of your source files and you know, then it really works the same. So if, if it's named the same as the workbook with this dot zip ending, then it will find it automatically. It's kind of the same game as we've just gone through. If you want to place it somewhere else, just make sure you add it to the Python path in, in the configuration. So that can be helpful. It's very easy, no effort. Then another option that I personally find quite useful is if your user base knows how to use uh, Python, then creating a standard Python package may actually be uh, an option for you. And so the idea here is you create a Python package and we'll see on the next slide uh, just very roughly how that works. And then once you have that package, then you can actually upload it to PyPI, which I guess if it's your company internal code, that's not an option, but then you could also uh, pull up an internal PyPI. And if that's too much hassle, then you can, again, you can just place it somewhere on a shared drive. Or if you store your code in Git, for example, it's also just good enough to basically um, use the Git URL and, and use it together with the pip command. So you, you can have basically people um, in, you know, use pip to install from source directly or from a shared drive. And um, it's relatively kind of a, a, a clean solution. People will be able to check which version of the package they are using. Um, and the best part about it, they don't have to touch much of the configuration. So they don't have to um, add this, uh, a certain path to their Python path for the reason that if you just, you know, create a standard package and install it into the default, uh, into the default location by using pip, then uh, it's gonna place into the site packages folder, which is automatically on the uh, module search path of, of your Python interpreter. So that's the good, the good part about it. Install it and Excel Wings will automatically find it. No need to, to change the Python path. So this slide here gives you a quick start on how to create a standard Python package. Um, you need to create a setup.py file and in its most simple configuration, most simple setup, it's really nothing more than kind of one command and that's about it. So then you call Python setup py as dist for standard distribution and that will create these familiar source packages, these tarballs, um, which you could upload to, to PyPI or just um, place somewhere, um, as I said before, somewhere on a shared drive, and then people will be able to just pip install them from there. So I'm not going to do that now um, here as a demo, but it's a simple way how you can get some some um, control and order in in the deployment of your underlying Python code. Then another option that we have is to basically wrap your a complete VBA uh, ribbon add-in into the Excel file itself. So always remember you have these two options. So you can have people, your users install the Excel Wings add-in so they can get access to the run Python calls and to, to the user defined functions through that add-in, or you can just use a single VBA module and use this inside your Excel spreadsheet. 
uh, the the latter has uh, the advantage, obviously, <clears throat> sorry, that you can uh, send over the Excel file and the recipient doesn't have to manually install an Excel add-in, which sometimes is more difficult um, than you probably imagine. So that's another option. And to get that set up, there is uh, the way you can do it. Uh, if I can just quickly show it here, you could, let's delete that again. So what you could do is you just say basically the same as before, and then you say standalone. And this will basically create a file which has already that um, standalone component of the VBA module uh, embedded. So go to Alt F11, and then you will find this sing, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I need to do it from from a different environment. Sorry about that, um, but you get the picture, right? So there, um, yeah. Let's leave that. Um, trust me on that. You can try it home. Uh, you can try it at home. So you would you would find a single module which has all the code in it, and um, the other option you can do is basically you 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 go to your um, let me just see to your installation. So you could go to, for example, here, uh, this time I'll pick the, the correct environment. So you could go here um, to your lib folder and then your site packages folder. And then wherever you have Excel Wings installed, you will find here that Excel Wings pass file. And that's basically the one um, you will be importing from the Excel Wings VBA editor. All right, so as we saw, um, there's a, you know, you can use a Python package and you can use an Excel file which has no dependency on the add-in. So both things are kind of making making deployment a little bit easier, but um, it still kind of uh, requires the recipient to have Python installed and it also kind of requires him to understand what he's dealing with. So he still has to, they still have to um, know about how to install a Python package. So um, that brings us to the next option, which is frozen executables. And I guess the most uh, prominent and popular choice these days is PyInstaller. Uh, PyInstaller will create a stripped down version basically of your dependencies and pack it into an exe with a few external files. Um, if you ever run into an issue with Py installers, there is a couple of other options here. There's CX freeze, there's the very old Py 2 exe, and there's a couple of other freezers you can uh, try out. But I would uh, these days I would always start with Py installer first. Now an important uh, important detail to learn about is that the frozen Python installation only works with the run Python calls in Excel Wings. In fact, you know, as we will see, you're gonna change it into run frozen Python. But importantly, what it does not work with is user defined functions. For that piece, unfortunately, you can't use PyInstaller. Now, PyInstaller or the, the, the frozen executables, they have uh, some some advantages. One is the size of the installation gets can get really small. And uh, the other thing is that it does automatically uh, compile byte compiler code into PYC files. And it also kind of hides away your source code within the exe. So for some people, that's kind of, you know, an important fact that the recipients, they can't really like inadvertently change their code too easily or also not look at the source code for proprietary reasons. Now, when you use um, such a, a frozen Python installation, then this is basically how you would go about it. I have a link here, which uh, you can look at to get a little bit more detail on how it works. So let me just check. I believe I have it open here. 
Yeah, so it's um, on the Exolinks demo repository, and then basically there's a frozen, uh, a frozen, uh, a frozen directory, and there you have a, a demo case in it that you could try to run. Um, you will see that in the in the first time round, you would just do pi installer demo.py. And in the then it basically produces this additional file, the demo spec that's going to be produced when you first run the, the, the freezer command. And the demo.spec uh, basically allows you to, to configure a few things. And the only part I have changed from the uh from from the standard um well from 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 the default that that it's automatically produced is is the the excludes folder or the excludes list here and the reason i did that is uh sometimes you have you have uh, you know optional dependencies that pi installer thinks you will need you will require in, in the case of Excel Wings, that could very well be that it's pandas or, or matplotlib. Um, yeah, all, all of the uh, matplotlib or, or um, yeah, pillow here. So these are um, a possibility to get rid of these optional dependencies. And sometimes it may also be that you are like in an environment where you have a lot of packages installed and I believe that might also have an influence on on what it picks or not so that's a that's a, a way to you know instruct pi installer to further strip out dependencies and so make your bundle as as small as possible and in in that case of of really the quick start uh demo case that we've just gone through before, you will get um, basically a 20 megabyte uncompressed uh, runtime, which is pretty impressive. So I've, I've done that here before. So you will end up having a folder which has um, a dist file, a dist uh, directory. And in there you will see basically your runtime. So you have the, the demo.exe that you can call with the run frozen uh, Python command, and you have all the other like uh, Python binaries that that are required here, the DLLs, and then here the basically the standard library, and then our source code would be somewhere hidden in the exe here inside. And yeah, the folder is just about 20 megabyte big. So if you like, you know, uh, zip this up, um, you will have a really really nice little package that you can easily distribute. And so, yeah, to conclude the, the frozen Python call here, um, this is basically the way you would call uh, such a, a frozen executable. You would just basically switch to the frozen, uh, run frozen Python command, and then use a path to wherever uh, you place that exe. All right, and then a word about code obfuscation. So. I've talked to quite a few people and it seems to be a quite popular wish to be able to, to obfuscate Python code. And it's, it's not an easy thing, so there isn't really many solutions out there. In my opinion, usually shipping PYC files is, is completely good enough in the sense that um, people, the users will not inadvertently, you know, change to the source code and and do some funny things there um it's definitely not enough if you if you're um you know if you're uh, obsessed with the security and privacy of your code then a pyc file obviously can be decompiled easily if if they wanted to so you know, I'm personally not using it, but uh, if if really that is an option or a concern for you to to use uh, code obfuscation on on Python source code, then uh, maybe have a look at PyArmor. It's a commercial package uh, that, in my eyes, probably is 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 currently the the best solution uh, if you if you want to have something that that really does you know obfuscate try to obfuscate in a, in a more um, solid way so if that is of concern for you then maybe have a look at this package other than that uh, maybe you know ask yourself if there's really a need to do it um, most of the time i guess you can get by uh, without going through the additional 
hassle here to obfuscate code. But obviously, I leave this up to you to decide. All right, so that brings us to uh, some other options we can use and that are shared drives and Dropbox and Co. So there are various various things you can do with shared drives. So as I said before, you can use it to like, you know, host your, your just your Python packages. You can have people install the Python package from your shared drive. But you can, in fact, use a shared drive to install a Python interpreter, a full Python installation. And, and that allows you to really use the configuration in your workbook or in your Excel add-in to point your interpreter to the installation which is on, on the shared drive. So Excelwing supports that. And it's definitely the most uh, kind of server-like experience you can get. Uh, it's on a centralized, you know, it's a centralized deployment. If you want to make an update, you can do it in just one single place and you don't have to deploy to every single desktop of your user base. Now, the, down, the downside to that is obviously it only works internally. So like if you have external clients, who depend on your Excel Wings powered spreadsheet, then that will not be a solution. And also, if you have a slow shared drive, then that may give you a performance hit. Uh, I know though it's used in practice. I even had a case where um, somebody in the US, they were actually using a, a shared drive in a different state from, from their office. So even that uh, was, was working out fine. Maybe not with the speed of light, but it was still working. Um, so you have to try it out and see uh, what works for you. Definitely, um, you know, you can also use the frozen executable. If you, if you want to use a, a freezer, you can also put that on a, on a shared drive. And then again, simply point the run frozen Python command to that executable on the shared drive. And finally, you can certainly use uh, you know, systems like Dropbox, Box, OneDrive, and whatnot to actually do the same as you would on, on a shared drive. And it probably uh, works easier if you have maybe a stripped down version of the Python interpreter like you, like you get with a um, frozen executable. It's just you know, easier to copy it on, on your Dropbox or OneDrive folder. Um, but it actually does, it does work. So, I mean, a full Python installation works. It's just about, I don't know, 1,500 files, but um, I've tried it out. So it does seem to work perfectly fine, which is actually probably um, a, a good way to, 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 to leverage the setup if you have um, a Dropbox or OneDrive in, in your company. One thing that will help you there is to again use the environment variable you have in in on on Windows. So you should not hard code um, your you know uh, the, the the path to the the interpreter. You can simply use, uh, for example, for in the case of Dropbox, uh, depends a little bit if you have Dropbox for business or not, then the, the, the folder name will change. But basically you can start with the user profile uh, backslash Dropbox, and then the same for OneDrive. So OneDrive has uh, a couple of different environment variables. I'm sure you will find which one is, is, is in effect for you. It's probably OneDrive, or then if you're in a, a commercial, in a business setup, it's, it's gonna be one, uh, OneDrive commercial, not 100% sure um, how the policy is, um, you know, which one always works. So that's another um, a possibility. Uh, you can leverage Dropbox and so on, and together with the environment variables, that also gives you quite a flexible setup and a good way to deploy new updates. And this brings us to uh, the last chapter here in, in this webinar. And uh, this is about the additional possibilities you have with Excel Wings Pro. And so basically, uh, let's just you know, define a few goals 
that uh, we had in 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 uh, designing an additional solution for for the Xlinks Pro client. So, what we wanted to achieve is basically a solution that works for people who have zero Python knowledge and you know to make it as easy as possible it also would require a zero configuration so no pass setting no you know dropping uh, a file in a specific specific folder but it should really just work with the click of a button and it also has to work for both udfs and run python we saw that's an issue with the frozen with the frozen um, python installation and it works for it should work for external distribution uh, for internal maybe dropbox or shared drive is a, is a good solution but not for external and we should also have a very easy way to actually deploy updates to that setup and then finally we wanted it to be a cross platform so currently we have a solution for windows but uh, mac os will work the same and so um, a solution will come hopefully soon on that end too and so uh, now I'd like to go through a couple of kind of, you know, the, um, the, the different steps or the different, um, the, the different parts we're going to use uh, to kind of put together a solution. And then uh, in the end, we can see how, how this works. So one part of, of the solution is, is the ability to embed Python code in, in Excel. And this I would like to show you um, in 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 uh, real life here, real quick. So, for example, here I have my pro uh, demo case, and let me just check. Yeah, that's fine. So you can see um, with Excellence Pro, you can embed your Python code directly in your worksheets. And all you have to do to make it work is really uh, name a sheet with the .py ending. And so I've done a very, a very simple setup here. I have even two Python files here. This one just uh, defines a single variable. And then this one, um, it's getting imported from here. And so you can uh, basically just, you know, click the button here and it works. You can go back, you can actually do changes. So you can maybe put in here from Excel Wings Pro and click the button again, and this will be reflected right away. So it's a very easy way to basically make Excel and Excel Wings feel more like the traditional VBA experience. And uh, the same actually works for 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 use defined functions. So I can just here uh, import my my use defined function, and as as usual, uh, it still works the same, right? And then I I can also change it. So if I like to change my uh, use defined function here to get some some exclamation marks, then I need to re-import. That's basically different to how um, the how the, the non-embedded version works. But then you see like when I click on uh, control alt F9 to recalculate the user defined function, then it's immediately reflected. Now um, we will see in a moment like why uh, that can be very helpful in terms of deployment and updates. But for now, um, that's how the embedded Python feature works on, on Excel Wings Pro. Right. And so as you may know, we have another uh, tool, which is called Excel Trail, and which acts as basically a GitHub-like system for Excel files. And since we are starting to embed the Excel, uh, the Python code here in Excel, you may rightfully, you know, ask yourself, um, how do I keep track of the code? And so also very quickly, I just wanted to show you how it can currently work. So this is basically Excel Trail. And I have set up here my Excel Wings demo repository from, from GitHub to synchronize here on Excel Trail. And so one, um, one sample I have here does use embedded code, which is my Big Mac reporting sample. And you can see here, um, I have the Python code. And 
as the title of, of the slide suggested, it's really iteration zero. So uh, you will not get any fancy display here. It's really just you can see the text in the cells and you can also see the changes. So basically, I would see here that um, at some point here, I changed the, um, the URL here into a local CSV file. So that is currently how it works. The plans that we have here go into the direction that we basically would like to, to, to display it as proper code at some point. So much like, uh, for example, uh, we currently show VBA code. So for example, uh, you would get embedded Python code, you would then get, um, you know, shown correctly as a properly kind of uh, Python syntax highlighted code in, in the project. So that's kind of probably coming up somewhere over the next couple of months. But for now, um, you can still tell when something changed by using Excel Trail. All right, so that's that. And then finally, we have um, the other part, which, which um, uh, next to basically embedding the Python code, which allows us to, to have a smooth uh, installation experience. And so what we offer on, on the Excelwings Pro subscription is access to a fully automated pipeline on GitHub, which creates the um, installer for your use case uh, whenever you push new code. So let's uh, quickly see how this works. And that brings us to this here. So basically you will get access to a repository where you only have to provide your requirements in the classic requirements.txt. So in this case, it, uh, the project really just depends on Excel wings and NumPy. And then you also can, if you want, you can upload a, a source code file. So this one here is, is the, the, the simulation sample that has been around, I believe, uh, since about you know version 0.1 from 2014, the classic um, Monte Carlo simulation. So the other option, I say this is an option because uh, if you embed your Python code within your, your spreadsheet as we've just seen, then that is nothing, you, there is nothing you have to do. So basically you can leave that empty. The code will be directly in your spreadsheet. And then if you have a, a code signed certificate, you can upload that. It's basically again what I um, mark as optional here. The difference will be that the, the installer that we create uh, that is being created for you um, will actually either show an unverified publisher or if you do have a, a code sound certificate it will be um, showing your uh, company name as the author of the of the installer and so will will basically be a bit more trustworthy for for people to install and so let's go back here so once you have uploaded the requirements file um, then you basically just go to uh, releases and you draft a new release and you uh, put in a name. So we can do that right now. So for example, I'll just do that 1.1. I published a release and that then will trigger a pipeline, which when it's done, will paste, make the, you know, installer available um, for you to download. And so that installer is nothing magic. It's really just a standard Python installation, which uh, has all your dependencies uh, installed and also optionally your source, your source code if you opt for not embedding it into the Python, into the um, Excel file. And um, what it does now is it, it installs, it basically unzips that Python installation into a predefined directory. And so all you need to do is point your Excel file to that predefined directory. And then um, I'm going to show you what basically the, the user experience is for someone um, who, who, who needs to install it. So basically the idea here is 
you ship your your Excel file. So as I said, this is um, let me just make it big again. So this is the uh, this is the, the the simulation, the classic simulation, and this has a hidden uh, a hidden configuration. So you see it points again to an environment variable to basically the local app data directory where um, it expects the installation to be. So because I don't want my end user to be worried, I can hide it again. And so if they start using that and you know they don't know what they're doing, they don't have anything installed, they obviously will get the error message that uh, they could not find the interpreter. And you know we, you could actually um, customize that error message a bit further and and you know tell them basically to download maybe the installer and 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 get that set up and so basically the installer uh, maybe it's already here i don't remember how how long it takes yeah not here yet so um basically that's that's the installer you will get um you will double click it you see uh you get the verified publisher because we have a code signed certificate uh, you, you just click yes, uh, you say install. It will literally just unzip the uh, required uh, Python files in your uh, local directory. And once that's done in a second, you simply have to finish. And now when you go back to the simulation file, then we can run the simulation and as you saw it uh, required zero settings neither during the installation of the installer nor here on on the side of excel because we know where it's going to be installed so um, the excel file finds the python installation with all the dependencies easily and so that's basically uh, the story behind that um, behind this zero configuration setup. So uh, yeah, again, as a summary, what happens behind the scenes, you basically point the Excel file to the project folder on your um, local app data directory. And then on the Excel file, um, you probably, um, you, you do definitely want to embed the Excel Wings module. This means that the recipient doesn't require an Excel Wings add-in installation. And then um, if you wanna go there, and I would recommend you do that, um, you can embed your Python code in the Excel file. And um, because that gives you the unique position or the, that brings you into, you into the unique position to actually deploy updates to your model or to your Excel uh, tool uh, by simply, you know, giving the client or the user a new version of the Excel file. So they don't have to um, reinstall a, a Python dependency. They don't have to uh, drop some Python source files in a specific folder. Um, it, so it's a very clean setup. And the only, you know, the only occasion where the clients would need to actually kind of um, download the new installer, let's say, and, and rerun the, the installer is if you would, uh, for example, um, if you add a dependency, so you find out that, you know, you prefer to do some stuff in pandas instead of NumPy, and so you have to add the pandas dependency. But I mean, usually if you have like a relatively stable tool, then you really have to set up this, this runtime once, and probably by now, I would expect that this has arrived. Yeah, so you see now, um, a few minutes later, we have the new um, the new executable uh, package here, the new installer, so you can just download it and ship it to your client. So in that case, um, that needs to be done, but that's mostly really just because uh, here, if you change the requirements file, then you will need to, uh, to ship an update in the installer. Other than that, if you use 
the embedded uh, source code feature, then really you just have to replace the, the Excel file and that simply feels like a standard VBA enabled workbook and every user know how to do that. So they don't need to know, you know, that it runs on Python. They don't need to know um, a lot of other things. It just behaves and really looks like any other ordinary, uh, you know, Excel macro enabled file. And I guess uh, that's pretty much the, the end of the presentation slightly a little bit longer than 30 minutes. To conclude, uh, obviously you can also hide these files and that kind of, you know, brings it out of, of, the, of, of the user's, user's hands. So again, you're kind of back to uh, a standard Excel file. And that was my presentation about the different deployment um, options. If you like, uh, please, you know, uh, look me up on LinkedIn and add me. I'm always happy to connect. And now I am going to see if there are any questions.